Well, every spring, monarch butterflies disperse across California to find places to lay their eggs. Joining us now with more on these backyard gems is Ms. Mallory Lindsay. Ms. Mallory, great to see you as always. I was, uh, Liz let me take this interview from her because in my family we are big on raising monarch butterflies. We do it all the time, grandkids involved. Hi, V. Um, yeah, tell oh, us. Tell that us. just melts my heart. Oh, oh my no, goodness. no, my granddaughter loves it. It's, it's, uh, it's just so fun for the family to get involved with. So I'm so excited we're talking about this. Oh, and that just me melts my heart again, like to know that you and your, you're getting your kids involved and that's what we need. Yeah, today we're talking about bringing one of the most iconic North American butterfly species back to the backyards of San Diego. I'm talking about the Western monarch butterfly. For those of us who may not be familiar with this species, uh, it's this incredible endurance athlete of the insect world. They make these epic migrations to get to their winter homes. There's two distinct populations, the Eastern and the Western in San Diego is one of the wintering homes for the Western population. Unfortunately, many of the sites that used to see hundreds, if not thousands of these beautiful butterflies aren't seeing any. And although there are many factors contributing to the decline, unfortunately, there's less than 1% of the historic population of the Western but, uh, monarch butterflies. One of the factors that we can also help with is there's just not enough butterfly pit stops, if you will, pollinator pit stops, which are areas that provide host plants, feeder plants, and also sheltering areas. Now, we may say like, Miss Mallory, there's tons of flowers in San Diego. And yes, you're absolutely right. But monarch butterflies are very particular. Um, they can recognize their feeder plants based on the colors and the shapes. And so all these exotic species that they're seeing, although they're flowers, they're not really recognizing them as food. And to put this in perspective, it's like us living in the city, growing up with grocery stores and restaurants, and then getting plopped into the middle of the jungle. We know there's food around, but we really don't know what we can eat and what's gonna hurt us. And so that's kind of what the monarch butterflies are feeling right now in our backyards. And also many plants have toxins uh, that help protect them. And so the monarch butterfly has been able to coexist with the native milkweed only uh, to have their caterpillars be able to consume the leaves and not get sick and to actually use the toxins from the milkweed to form a, a defense mechanism against predators like birds. And so it's really important that we help out our monarch butterflies by planting these very specific plants that not only can they lay their eggs on, but also that they can feed on and to have those much needed pit stops on their way to migrating back to their other areas. Yeah, and here in Southern California, it's milkweed. Milkweed, milkweed. The more milkweed you can plant, the more you can pot and put in your yard, the, that, that, that's one of those pit stops you're talking about. Yeah, I, like you couldn't have said it better. Absolutely. We need milkweed and many people think in order to make a difference, we have to have these epic, huge gardens, although that's great. If you can just put, like you said, a planter full of milkweed and some nectaring plants so the moms can lay their eggs and also refuel as they head on out, that is just so, so easy and so important. I am so happy that you and your granddaughter do this together. That just, oh, I love it. Oh yeah, our next door neighbor too. <laughs> she got she got really her whole patio is filled with milkweed plants. I mean, so between, you know, they can fly from one yard to the other. But it is uh, such a great thing, especially with kids involved. You can go down and like you did mention that I'll reiterate it. When you buy your milkweed, if it's already potted and it's growing, make sure that they haven't used pesticides on it. That's the main thing. And most places around here, they they, they they're getting from a reputable source. So you really don't have to worry. But it's good to ask, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, you're making my cheeks hurt. I'm smiling so big. Yes. And I love the fact that you said your neighbors are doing it too. That's what we need. Remember, these insects are super tiny. They use a lot of energy. So having these very close kind of pit stops are, is also so important. And um, also, if you're interested in doing this with the kids too, the Monarch SOS app is incredible. It not only teaches you about the anatomy of the butterfly, but also what specific milkweed plants that you can use, which is fantastic, and also look alike. So if you do have pests that you want out of your garden, but they kind of look like Monarch butterfly caterpillars, you can recognize the two. And it also has a reporting app as well. So if you're in Balboa Park, your backyard, at the zoo, wherever there's a butterfly garden, you can also let scientists know that you're seeing them around. Oh yeah, and but it's such an experience to go from watching a, a little caterpillar take down a milkweed, get big, <laughs> 
crawl away, and then you see where they crawl. They spin silk. To go, that, that's what they look like when they're eating and getting big, but they spin sp silk, they J up, then they go into chrysalis, and you watch the chrysalis get dark. And while they're developing, you can look and see the butterflies leaves through the chrysalis. And then if you're ex there to experience them watching come out of the chrysalis, that's even more amazing because that chrysalis is their food first food source. Ah, I love it so much. Yes, you know, you should have done this whole segment because you know exactly what you're talking <laughs> about. And I hope more people get excited with you. If you have any questions, please contact me, MissMallaryAdventures.com or on any kind of social media. Or of course, they can contact you as well because you are incredibly knowledgeable. And I just hope we all get on this because we need our monarchs back in these backyards. Yeah, we do. All right, great interview. Great ah, information. Thank you so much. All right. Bye. Bye, Mallory. Yeah, and if you get milkweed and you happen to get the little orange, little yellow aphids, and they're mainly on the stems of the, of the milkweed, they're not gonna hurt the caterpillars really, but you can get a cotton ball with some rubbing alcohol and just lightly, it'll, it'll take care of them right away. Some people use a little soapy water and spray it on there, but the residue can stay on there and might not be that good for the caterpillar. So just little tips for you. You can Google it if you have any questions or contact Miss Mallory, like she said.